So we're going to start with the Honorable Anders Fong. Uh, as mentioned, he's a council member in the city of Millbrae, and he's going to be talking about supportive policies for local Asian American communities in California. So Anders, please go ahead. Thank you, Donald. Uh, thank you so very much. And I'd also like to thank uh, the entire Hong Kong associations and different chapters for the opportunity to speak to everyone today. Uh, again, my name is Anders Fong, uh, but first of all, uh, in light of what happened in San Jose today, I'd like to say a few words uh, about what happened. So I was quite devastated by some of the horrific shooting incidents that just happened in San Jose this morning. Our heart goes out to the families who lost their loved ones, uh, as well as those who are affected by the shooting incidents. Um, but this is just another tragedy uh, involving gun violence, uh, as well as mental health issues. And Views continue to plague our country and our state, uh, and communities must come together and take mental health issues uh, seriously. Uh, and incidents such as this could certainly be avoided if we all can just dedicate it uh, in proper resources from, you know, we put between prevention to outreach to proper training to our first responders, uh, as well as clinical treatments to those in need of those assistance. So, again, nine too many lives have been lost today um, to gun violence and mental health issues and our heart goes out to the families affected by this. Um, so with that, you know, as far as our discussion of the day, uh, you know, the rising anti-Asian violence, uh, the hate crimes and the xenophobias continue to be our national issues. Uh, and you know, these issues really need no introductions to anyone uh, that is on this call today. And so, you know, we've all seen the TV and I don't think anybody can turn on the TV today without witnessing yet another crime committed against uh, the Asian American community. You know, we've seen that 84 year old uh, API seniors uh, being killed in his own driveway. Um, two senior women recently were stabbed while waiting for public transportation in downtown San Francisco in the financial district. And we all saw the video of a young man in New York subway being bitten until he was unconscious. So, you know, seeing this large uptake of hate crime committed against our community. Many of those, I can pretty much contribute to those hateful rhetoric, uh, the divisive ma the narrative of our previous Trump administrations. Uh, we had a president who openly blamed the Chinese for causing the global pandemic, uh, as well as blaming China for the ever widening Sino-US trade gap. Um, and you know, all this has insinuated an anti-Chinese and anti-Asian sentiment throughout the entire country. I've been in this country for over 30 years, and you know, seeing this level of hate crime and xenophobia, uh, it's really unseen in the, re in the recent U.S. history. Uh, now, in terms of being in the Bay Area, uh, where I reside, um, according to the 2010 census, uh, you know, we've got about 33% of our population in San Francisco declare themselves as uh, Asian Pacific Islanders. Uh, in San Mateo County, where I reside personally, uh, that statistic, it's about 25%. And that's according to census that was about 11 years ago. Um, and in my jurisdiction, the city of Melbourne, uh, we have nearly 50% of our population that put themselves as API, uh, where ethnic Chinese are approximately 40%. So we're pretty, uh, we have a pretty diverse uh, population and demographic here in our part of this country. Uh, in terms of you know, some of the things that we've been seeing in terms of activities, um, you know, given some of the hate crime uh, that we've been seeing throughout the Bay Area, throughout the country. Uh, I recently sent out an open letter on February 23rd to the Sabatello County Board of Supervisors uh, and the District Attorney calling for legislative actions to aggressively prosecute and take zero tolerance stance against this hate crime committed against our community. Uh, and since February, there's been many anti-Asian hate rallies throughout the entire Bay Area cities, uh, some in San Mateo, some in Oakland, and Fremont, and in San Francisco. Personally, I've held another rally in Melbourne, uh, where I, my jurisdiction is uh, on April the 17th, and it was well attended uh, by the Lieutenant Governor, uh, as well as over 500 people. Uh, and on May 15, along with a group of young volunteers, you know, we stepped up the effort a little bit more uh, and organized another rally in San Mateo, throughout for the country, for the countywide rally. Uh, and the theme of the day was communities united and be able to unite all the communities against all these hate crimes, uh, as well as you know, all the xenophobias that we've been seeing you know, 
among all the marginalized community in addition to the APIs. Uh, very well attended, and uh, Congresswoman Jackie Spear was also in the audience, and uh, she even gave the API community a U.S. flag that used to be flown in the U.S. Capitol. And her message to us was really to demonstrate the unity with the API community uh, and recognition and the contribution that the API community has made uh, for this country since we built the railroad, uh, as well as commitment to support our di a diverse and inclusive environment in our community and supporting our effort to continue to bring about the awareness uh, and the need to take bold and immediate actions against these horrific uh, and senseless violence committed against our seniors and especially the most vulnerable. And so as far as you know, call to action, I think we need to take a more proactive approach uh, in dealing with these issues, um, such as continue to push for the legislative changes uh, at every level of the government, especially at the state. We need to put more tools into the toolbox of our district attorneys to prosecute these crimes, uh, continue to widen the definitions of hate crimes, uh, and enhance the penalties on these horrific acts, particularly on those that involve weapons, uh, as well as those who commit crime against our seniors and, and the most vulnerable people, women and children. Um, you know, working with the state and local government to dedicate additional resources uh, to outreach our API communities. You know, many of these crimes actually went underreported uh, in terms of statistics. Uh, they're largely contributing to some of the factors such as, you know, we have a lot of language barrier as far as our senior goes. You know, they don't speak the language. So we're talking to the police and the sheriffs. It's a very difficult task for them. Um, and some due to just the cultural differences that they just do not want to speak to the authorities uh, and the law enforcement. Um, some of them have psychological reasons, such as they just stop blaming themselves for the crime committed against them, um, or just being shameful, uh, you know, the inside guilt of being a victim of a crime. Um, and some simply think that, you know, reporting a crime may not necessarily be helpful because they are not likely to be investigated or, or prosecuted, um, and, you know, simply be afraid of retaliation. So some of these reasons contributed to the underreporting. Uh, of these crimes. So, you know, we must continue to do these educations um, and really start discussing these issues uh, at length in school. Um, and that to teach our children that racism is not okay. Uh, xenophobia, such as cold flu, uh, Chinese virus, are not okay. Um, I mean, this country really is founded by immigrants, and diversity and inclusiveness really are the fundamental values and principles that we all must share uphold and continue to defend. Um, so with that, I, I just kind of want to share a little bit of an example with everyone in the audience today. Um, I went to see my dentist uh, last week uh, and the hygienist, she came from Guangzhou. She speaks Cantonese with me and she recognizes me uh, for being a local council member. And we started talking about you know, uh, some of the things that's been happening in the Asian American community and that she used to live in San Francisco, in the city. And she's been seeing a lot of these issues regarding safety um, and feeling unsafe. And, and she moved with her husband and two children to a suburb. And uh, she was telling me that she feel more safe. Uh, and she recently moved to a white people neighborhood. And, and when I hear that, you know, my first reaction was, you know, we, the Chinese and Asian Americans, sort of felt that, you know, we're at this perpetual mindset of being a foreigner in this country, moving into a white people neighborhood. Uh, and yet, this is supposed to be a neighborhood for everybody. Uh, and that, you know, it, it's, we should feel home and we should feel safe. So having that mindset in itself uh, reminds all of us uh, that we need to continue to teach our children that. You know, we belong in this country, rightfully, and it was founded on immigrants, by immigrants, uh, and, and inclusiveness, uh, as well as uh, just you know, diversity is, is a fundamental principle of this country. So, you know, as a council member, um, as a civil servant, uh, and as the only first generation Chinese American immigrant, born and raised in Hong Kong, by the way, uh, elected official in the Senate County, here are some of the things that I see as an important priority for us um, that I think 
we really need to advance these uh, agendas. First, you know, I, I continue to work with the California state legislatures uh, and to widen the definitions of hate crime uh, and protect the most vulnerable API communities members, uh, especially uh, our seniors, uh, and enhance the penalty on those who committed hate crimes and especially with special circumstances, such as the use of weapons and bodily injury with racially motivated animus. And uh, lately, I've had the opportunity of working with a state senator, Josh Becker, uh, in drafting legislation to do just these things. And hopefully we can bring forward um, the legislation that we can all share with the API community as at large uh, and really open up the discussions on how to protect and make everyone feel safe again. So, um, and I also recently have been working with the San Mateo County Sheriff's Office uh, in creating and instigating a new community liaison program where the sheriff has actually agreed to dedicate uh, additional uh, law enforcement resources, uh, a high ranking Asian language speaking officers to serve as a liaison dedicated to the API community. Um, the goal is to ensure that these hate crimes are properly reported, um, properly investigated and prosecuted, uh, and to continue to educate our public as to how to protect themselves uh, and for crime preventions. And so um, lastly, last week, um, the Biden administrations signed into a new law uh, of the anti-hate crime bill where they would dedicate new DOJ uh, resources to prosecute these hate crimes at a federal level uh, and also through the Health and Human Service Agencies under the new Secretary Becerra, who used to be the California Attorney General, uh, grants will be available uh, to conduct crime reduction programs to prevent and uh, respond to these hate crimes. So uh, I encourage all the Asian American in all communities throughout to, to the entire country uh, to establish their own NPO, uh, nonprofit organizations, to apply for these federal grants. But that would help bring additional resources to law enforcement uh, and educations and crime preventions that will help the victims of these hate crimes. Uh, I myself will do exactly that, forming a new uh, nonprofit and working through our Congresswoman Jackie Spears' office uh, and apply for these federal grants. Hopefully I can instigate a program of anti-hate crime task force in conjunction with our local sheriff's office and bring about more additional law enforcement resources uh, and education and to keep our community safe. Well, thank you, Andrew. So there's a lot of questions I'm sure we can um, <clears throat> cover at the end uh, of the speakers uh, uh, part of the program. But one question I was wondering before we go on to Fred is, is, is California in any way uh, different, maybe better or worse, doing something better, um, leading by example, not leading by example? Um, any, any thoughts about that compared to the well, I will, Yeah, I will say I have been working with the legislature uh, and you know, the message is very clear that we need to take bold and decisive legislative actions to protect the most vulnerable. Uh, our seniors, our API community members, just like as we protect our young women, for example. I mean, there's no mistake in that you're attacking, you know, an 84-year-old Asian man in his own driveway, uh, in not the same way, you know, protecting our young women. And so um, I think the message is loud and clear, um, and, and the national message is there, and uh, we are going to take act, you know, uh, very decisive action in, in legislatively, uh, as well as from a law enforcement perspective to keep our community safe and that's the first priority for us. Sure, absolutely.